A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of the God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the world. The apostles' proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, and also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenaeus, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Faith. The stone that the builders reject 
has become a cornerstone and a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the world as it is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praise of him who calls you out of the darkness into the wonderful light. The word of the Lord. How much love, respect, kindness, faith, 
gentleness, hard work she was putting in order to raise all these 11 children. She was working very hard. She was actually the one who started Mother's Day in America. That's why President Woodrow Wilson in 1914 approved this for all the United States. And then spread it all over the world. So we are very happy that today we can respect our mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, and any woman by motherly attributes. Thank you for who you are and all you do for us. You make the world a joyful, loving place. To all female parishioners of St. Augustine Parish, as well as I remember my previous parishes in Constance, and they're just a whole lot. Uh, St. Ferdinand are like mothers to me because of the hugs, smiles, affirmation, meals you drop off, and so much more. Thank you. I love you. To all the females on my staff who are like mothers to me, thank you. I am sure you want to strangle me in times like the sun, but I love you. To my sister and sister-in-law, who are like mothers to me, thank you. I love you. And of course, to my own mother, thank you. I wouldn't be man and priest. I am without your love and influence in my life. I love you. Allow me to share some thoughts about Mary and motherhood that are based off a recent homily I gave, I am sorry to say it was from a funeral homily for a mother. But the gospel for that funeral mass was actually the same as this Sunday's gospel. Do not let your hearts be troubled. In my father's house are many dwelling places. If we are called as Catholics to make Jesus Christ incarnate in our lives by our faith, good actions, and wisdom, we are also called to make the Blessed Mother present. Mary can be alive in each of us. We see this particularly in mothers. Mary is present in mothers. I'm sure Jesus tripped and hurt himself as an infant. Mary tended to him. She showed compassion and helped him heal. She was also by his side as he carried the cross through Jerusalem to Calvary. Mothers, likewise, take care of their children, helping them heal and comforting them when hurt. Not long time ago, I was talking with one of the mothers. Her son just left the prison. He was coming back home. And she said, I am so happy. Even though my son is a criminal, he is my son. He is my loving child. It will be my most beautiful Mother's Day because I'm going to spend with my son. This is how mothers love us. No matter who we are, no matter what we do, they always love us. They care for us, respect us, support us. They always forgive us. They always work very hard in order to be there for us when we need them. That's why today we want to say thank you. Thank you, dear mother, for loving me, for caring for me. Especially we want to say thank you to our Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Jesus and Mother of us all. Mary receives credit for Jesus' first miracle, the wedding feast of Cana. She indicated to her son that they had run out of wine and saw our Lord responded. She drew out of Jesus his true self. She inspired him to perform a divine action. Other mothers likewise inspire us and compel us to good actions. 
that made us the best version of ourselves. Sometimes they fail. Sometimes we follow different examples around us. Sometimes we do not respect our mothers. Maybe later on our regrets. Maybe today is the day to kiss the mother, to hug your mother. If you don't be able to see her, please make a phone call to tell her how you love her, how you respect her, how you are sorry for all those bad things that you did not respect her for so many years. If she is not about believing, say a prayer for her. Mary, mother of Jesus, the mother of us all, was a character. When your child is the Son of God, with immense knowledge and power, you need a sense of humor and level of flexibility. Mothers who can laugh, adopt, and stay calm in banning Marian's attributes. Mary is an asset to our faith. We can relate and to know Jesus better because of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Jesus and Mother of us all. Our own mothers similarly made Jesus present. God bless our holy ladies. Maybe before I finish, I want to share with you the story when I came to the United States over 35 years ago. I visited Holy Trinity Church. That was a church by Kennedy Expressway falling apart. The record falling apart. Everything was falling apart. Two old priests. I attended the Mass in a basement. There was another church, very large. Very large. One upper church, one lower church. Three people came, maybe four. And the priest, his name was Pavelcha. He said, Father, I think we'll never be able to save this church unless the Blessed Virgin Mary help us. I believe in her. I'm praying to her. But look at me. I'm too old to do anything with this church. As you know, this church is beautifully renovated now. It's one of the greatest churches in Chicago. If you'll be passing by, uh, Kennedy Express, the Holy Trinity, stop there and see inside. It's a very beautiful church. God works in mysterious way. But what Father Pavelcha told me at that time, he said, one night when I was so tired, you can probably recall from your memory, when you were very tired, you don't want to do anything. You want to pick up the phone, you don't want to uh, hear the doorbell, nothing. So he said, I hear the doorbell once. Oh, I said, no, 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 I'm not going to answer. It's already 11. I'm not going to answer. Second time. The third time. And then he said, oh my goodness, who is that stubborn person that ringing the doorbell? So he went there. It was a beautiful woman. Beautiful. Beautiful face. Covered with veil. And he said, Father, there's a man not far from here. He's dying. Father, hurry, please help him, because he's a sinner. He might die in his sins. Please help him, anoint him, give him all you do him. He looked at his watch, said, oh, it's late. But if you insist, I will do it. So he said, I took my jacket, I took the blessed sacrament, all the oils, and I went there. It was all house also falling apart. He said, I rang the doorbell. Nobody answered. I rang second time, the third time. Nobody answered. It was an empty house. I took my flashlight in order to get inside. I was screaming, anybody there? Anybody there? Nobody. It was empty house. So I decided to search. He said, I went upstairs and upstairs in a van was an old man dying. He said, full of dirt. He was dying from illness and from starvation. I was able to talk to him. He said, final confession 
Final words, I get an absolution. He received a little piece of the Eucharist. He closed his eyes and he died. I came down. He said, my heart was pounding. Who was that woman who called me to come and anoint him? Who was telling me, hurry up, Father, because this is the last moment. You can help him, Father, please. Who was that woman? I am standing downstairs. I am curious. I'm wondering. And you know what happened? The whole stairway just fell, fell down on the first floor. He said I was even more terrified. I was able to climb up and come down and then fall. It was like a miracle. So I called the police. They came, they brought the fire van, fire truck, put the letter step, step letter, and took him down. He was dead. I buried him. They tried to find his family, but they couldn't. He didn't have any family. He said, Father, who was that woman? Who was that woman who called you? He said, I can think of only one. Blessed Virgin Mary. My brothers and sisters who are listening to me today on Mother's Day, on the fifth Sunday of Easter, think about your mothers. Think about the greatest mother that ever walked on this earth. And may this day, even though the weather is not so good, maybe there will be the moment to show you love, to show you respect, to show you honor to those women who gave you so much that you can be a better person. And one day, especially this one, one day you can be in heaven. Amen.